there are plenty of anime studios in Japan. Some big, some small, some disliked, and some loved. When someone asks me the question what the best anime studio is, I would probably answer with Kyoto Animation. However, besides Kyoto, there are a couple studios that come close to that title, and one of them happens to be none other than Studio Madhouse. <laughs> For nearly two decades, Madhouse was a studio that fans loved and respected. If they were adapting a well-known manga series or creating their own original work, then chances were it was going to be pretty damn good. Even years later, series like Death Note, Hajime no Ippo, Trigun, and much more still talked about and celebrated by fans. Now that's not to say that Madhouse is perfect, in fact, far from it. They've made mistakes over the years, just like every other company has. However, one of, if not the biggest reason is because Madhouse has changed, and not for the better. The Madhouse we once knew is not the same Madhouse that we have today. In order to find out what brought about these changes, we must first start from the beginning. <laughs> During the 70s, anime was not very big, popular, or mainstream. There were only a small handful of studios that existed, and one of them was Mushi Productions. This was the home of many talented directors and animators that would shortly leave the studio in order to create their own. Many studios that are around today were formed and founded by ex-animators and directors from Mushi Pro. This includes studios such as Sunrise, Payrod, Kyoto, Shaft, and of course Madhouse. Madhouse was founded in October 1972 by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, Rintaro, Osamu Dusaki, and Masao Maruyama. Shortly after the studio was established, Madhouse would work closely with an already well-known studio named Tokyo Movie Shinsha. This was because the founder of the studio provided funding for Madhouse, so they were given contract work to finish by them. Their first project was animating a TV anime adaptation of Ace no Narai, which was a romance tennis series. During the next decade and a half, Madhouse would continue to animate content for TMS but also for studios such as Senryo and Tezuka Productions. So Madhouse was responsible for providing animation for series, but they wouldn't be directing and creating their own for quite a while. It wasn't until the 90s where Madhouse would start making its own works which would include TV anime, OVAs, and even films. While this was a big step up from mainly just animating other studios' works, the works they did make weren't that great. Their work during the early early 90s were at best just alright and at worst being garbage and no one bothers to care about today. It wasn't until the late 90s where Madhouse would truly begin to shine. During the end of the 90s, Madhouse would create classics such as Carcaptor Sakura, Trigun, and their first major hit film, Perfect Blue. This was directed by Satoshi Kon, who was a key staple at Madhouse for many years. He would direct other films such as Tokyo Godfathers and Millennium Actress, as well as a 13-episode TV series titled Paranoia Agent. Along with Satoshi, Madhouse would gather other talented members in the industry. This includes Araki Tetsuro, Asaka Mori, Mamoru Hosuda, and much more. Things were great for Madhouse during the 2000s. They released beloved and popular anime such as Hajime no Ippo, Monster, Black Lagoon, and Claymore, but none of them come close to their, and in general, one of the most popular anime of all time, which of course is Death Note. After the 90s, Madhouse began adapting bigger and more mainstream titles, and one of the biggest was the ever so popular manga series Death Note. This was a monster of a hit, not only in Japan, but in the US as well as the rest of the world too. Death Note's enormous popularity introduced so many people to anime back in the day. Sure, anime was still around and had its fans outside of Japan, but your average person probably never watched anime before. While not making anime mainstream, it certainly did help increase its popularity around the world. Because of this, along with some of their previous works, Madhouse quickly became a trusted and respected studio. 
However, after the 2000s, things began to change and not for the better. In 2010, director Satoshi Kon sadly passed away due to cancer. This left his fifth film, Dreaming Machine, unfinished and cancelled. Tetsuro Araki, who directed Death Note and High School of the Dead, left to join Wit Studio. There, he would direct another ever so popular series known as Attack on Titan. The same happened with other talents, such as one of the original founders, Masao Maruyama. Masao left Madhouse and founded his own studio known as MAPPA. When he left, he also took some talented animators with him too. Because of this, Madhouse was turning into a completely different studio that was made up of only a percentage of what it once was. It did gather new members over the years, but it doesn't appear that they've lived up to their predecessor's works. Over the last decade, Madhouse has managed to create some amazing and popular anime. These include the likes of No Game No Life, Parasite, Hunter x Hunter, and One Punch Man. Now that's great and all, but out of those mentioned, One Punch Man is their most recent one and that came out back in 2015. Not only that, but Madhouse didn't even produce the majority of it. A large portion of the animation was done by Studio Bones, which is another beloved and respected studio. So One Punch Man barely even counts as a Madhouse series despite it being labeled as one. For the past 7 or 8 years, Madhouse has created numerous works but none of them have lived up to fans' expectations. The only anime they've made that's managed to become popular is their adaptation of Overlord. However, popular doesn't necessarily mean good either. The thing about their Overlord adaptation is that it's very standard and underwhelming. It doesn't look or feel like a Madhouse show at all. Madhouse was known for animating stunning and impressive scenes. Even if you weren't a fan of some of their shows or movies, there was a high chance that at the very least the animation would be on point. Take a look at this scene from Death Note. Look how fast and tight the simple action of opening a bag of potato chips is. You can feel the incredible amount of tension from just the main character writing down words in a notebook. Another easy showcase of Madhouse's talent can be seen in Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime, so of course there's going to be a lot of fights with characters punching each other in their faces. And whenever this does happen, you feel each and every punch. This is what Madhouse was known for, directing and animating insane and well choreographed fights. However, nothing like this is seen in most of their newer shows and that of course includes Overlord. Overlord is cheaply directed with a lot of typical still shots and also contains some awful CGI. Every once in a while, Madhouse seems to release a solid series, but it's rare to see that sadly. Madhouse is now only a small shadow of what it once was, which is unfortunate. But luckily, it's not the name of a studio that defines a work. It's the people behind it. And thankfully, a large majority of Madhouse's former staff are still living and working in the industry to this day. They're just making their own works elsewhere. Whether that's at Studio Bones, Wit, or MAPPA, we're still able to view and enjoy these artists' creations. And that's what's most important.